You know, it feels a little ironic that so many years into this whole tech YouTuber thing, after having upgraded my house to 10 gig networking seven years ago, so that we could edit our video off of a uh, centralized storage server, I still haven't upgraded my house to 10 gigabit networking. And the reason is that up until now, it's simply been too expensive to justify the cost. Not because the network cards are expensive, not because the switches are expensive, or even because the cabling's expensive. The problem is that in the past, if you wanted a cheap switch, you had to buy super expensive cables. And if you wanted to use cheap cabling that you can get for, wouldn't pay for this stuff? I think it was like 160 for the outdoor and 180 Canadian, so. That's like a thousand feet. You want cheap cabling. Oh, well now you need a really expensive switch. This changes the game. This Microtik CR-S312-4C plus 8XG-RM, wow, terrible name, <laughs> is just 500 US dollars for a 12 port 10 gigabit switch. And Jake and I are 10 gig in this house. It's RJ45. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the like compatible kind. Yeah. And the video is brought to you by Glasswire. With Glasswire, you can see what's going in and out of your PC when you're connected to the internet. That way you can find out if there's any suspicious apps that are behaving badly. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off Glasswire at the link in the video description. So in front of me is pretty much everything we're gonna need. We got our switch, we got our connectors, we got our crimper because we might have to do some custom length cables here. Um, Ethernet cards. $10,000 Fluke tester. What? Yeah, so I asked the Fluke I didn't guy, pay for that, did I? No, you didn't. Um, oh. They sent it to us just to borrow. I wanted to be able to actually certify the runs that we do so we can make sure that 100% they're ready to go and they will be <laughs> capable of 10 gigs. Certify the runs. Yeah. So just a pretty simple one gig switch. Uh, PoE switch, so that handles my access point and soon to be my ring doorbell. Mm -hmm. Then we've got the two gaming desktops, NAS, and then a couple of UPSs. So do any of these yeah. have 10 gig already? Uh, this one does, this one doesn't. Okay, and what about your NAS? No, actually, now that I think about it, it does not. So I brought two cards, so that's good. <laughs> now one small challenge is I don't actually remember where we ran the cable for the media center, like how it gets out of this room. Um, so we're probably gonna have to retrace our steps there because that is not a 10 gig rated cable. It was Cat 5E. We couldn't get Cat 6A that was outdoor rated easily or cheaply at the time. So because I didn't want to hardwire in a bunch of direct attached copper SFP plus cables, this switch's release was really the magic bullet that it took for me to finally go 10 gig. So it's a 12 port switch. You can see four of them are actually shared with these SFP plus ports, but we don't have to use those. What's cool about this for like a budget home upgrade though, is that if you did have something resembling like a home server room like this, where you've got a couple of machines that are in close proximity, you can get SFP plus network cards for super cheap. And the short run direct attached copper cables are actually not that bad. So if you already have some existing stuff built in, then you can decide, okay, I'll use you know these eight as ethernet only and then these ones well hey if i have some sfp plus gear i can go ahead and plug this in now we have never actually booted up this switch and i'm not super familiar with microtex equipment but my understanding is this is a smart switch isn't it smart switch yeah like managed yeah managed okay. switch yeah okay. yeah <laughs> <laughs> My camera operator and uh, Jake asked for some water. Oh my God. And uh, maybe next time they'll bring a Linus Tech Tips water bottle, lttstore.com. This one's also insulated though. And yes, in fact, gigabit is gigabit and no amount of having a 10 gig NIC in your machine is going to make that any faster than gigabit unless you also have a 10 gig switch. So we need to go ahead and get that installed. So let's rip that thing out. And it's gone. Rip. So what's funny about this is this is actually not that dissimilar to what we did for the water-cooled network switch project. One big plate with a heat pipe kind of carrying heat over to some kind of cooling element here. So in this case, we've got two 40 millimeter fans and uh, just kind of like a, that's a really weird heat sink, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's not too loud. <laughs> I'll give her a second. Yeah, it's, it's audible. With that said, I think he also did clarify that um, it gets particularly loud under load and we're not doing anything with it right now. No. To be clear, we're talking about Patrick from Serve the Home. Great guy, great site. Check him all out. All that stuff, yeah. 
We've uh, got one 10 gig link here, so we can tell because the color is green on this one instead of orange. It should be the one to my desktop. What the hell do I have on my network that's Huawei? Maybe this thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why it's so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> the Chinese government's spying on you. Huawei is an Android phone? Oh, that's right, my sister has an Honor phone. Do you think we have to go through the management port and turn on uh, the managed interface? Like, It should still show as a device on the network, like, unless it's well, like- Well, it doesn't. Giving itself its own IP. Honestly, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? Because I'm gonna use it as a dumb switch. Like, what? Well, I just wanna transfer files faster between my computer and my NAS, like. Okay. So then I need to shut off my NAS so that we can put a 10 gig card in it. So Jake is still trying to get into the management interface on this thing. Meanwhile, I'm gonna upgrade the server. Longtime viewers will probably recognize this as old Wanik. Oh, oh yeah, I'm coming out on my back. Oh. It's a Z390 Pro ASUS workstation board oh my God. with a um, 9900K. Uh, I forget how much RAM I put in it. I'm pretty sure it's 32 gigs of... Uh, <laughs> I have more RAM in my NAS than yours. Rip Jaws memory, yeah, and but I... have more cores. I'm actually not running any VMs, though. <laughs> <laughs> or one VM, one VM. So I don't actually have any screws. Um, one moment, please. Look, we weren't using it. I know for a fact we weren't using it. This completely blocks all the airflow. So we've got two 10 gig clients now. Just need to... You know? Oh, unraid. Have it go, yeah. It might not like auto do it. Oh no. <laughs> um, you might want to plug it back in the regular one so we can reconfigure oh, it. Oh, balls. Or maybe plug them both in. Yeah. Uh. Our status thus far, we have plugged in a network switch, have plugged things into the network switch. Uh, okay, do you want to see if it's up? Put a PCIe card in and that's about it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Is that it right there? Yes. So yeah, we basically just need to kind of replace this run then. So the spot where Jake is, is basically just right on the other side of that wall. We went the super lame-o way, and uh, we just went right into the back with like an RJ45 connector. Now this is a Cat 5e rated uh, plate here, so Hopefully we're good without that. At any rate, I guess we're just gonna have to cut this off and pull it back through. Boop. Okay, go ahead and pull. Oh, there we go. Um, do you know where, where does this go? Uh, that actually goes right up to that crawl space. Now seems like a good time to take a look at the differences though between Cat 5e and Cat 6a. So we know Cat 6a is rated for higher frequencies and therefore high, higher data rates, but What's the physical difference? Because the conductors themselves are both copper. They're all eight conductor twisted pair. Um, they're actually the same gauge. So it comes down to the way that the cable itself is designed. So aside from the sheathing, there's this plastic insert here. It's in like a cross pattern that keeps each twisted pair separate as it's running down the length of the cable. So that's why these will do 10 gig over 100 meters, whereas Cat 5e, you're lucky if it does 10 gig over like, I don't know, what, five meters, 10 meters? And I even then, I, I wouldn't recommend it. So is there any spots that are not safe to walk on? Uh, oh yeah. So if you want to go through my ceiling like a pro, then you you step in here without prior prior training. That's what Dennis did. <laughs> Dennis put his foot through my, through my garage ceiling. Oh. Oh, I don't think that's gonna hold, dude. That's, I'm pulling pretty hard. It's, it's so close. Ah! Oh, it disconnected! No! <laughs> it just got through. Oh, there we go, it's through, it's through. It's through? Okay. I was able to push it a bit. Oh, holy crap! There's a lot of mouse droppings in here. But there's so many nails sticking through the, the strapping for my roof, I can't. Oh, I hate this! Ah, so much spider web. Ow, just hit a nail on my I'm head. I'm pushing it up more. I got it, I got it. Hold on. Keep going. Ow. Whoever said being a nerd is easy. Look at this. These were still taped together. The original Cat5e cable broke. Isn't that crazy? 
Now all we gotta do is crimp an end on this thing and theoretically we have 10 gig down to the media center. Boom! All three of our ethernet interfaces are working. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna just add all of our interfaces to bond zero, which is going to just use them all for failover. Uh, now, theoretically, I can unplug the one gig connection and we'll have 10 gig to the server. Uh, oh, nice underwear, by the way. Ugh. LTTstore.com. Why do you why do you do this to me? This is the second time. <laughs> all right, so now it's time to actually terminate one of our cables here. This Cat 6A is our outdoor spec UV resistant stuff. So it's got a really thick insulation. So you basically just put this on, spin it around. It's even got a hole for that. I'm totally doing this from the wrong side. There we go. Ooh. And you don't actually even really need to pull off this much. This is like a, a lot of extra wire. You could, you could get away with about two inches. So we're gonna start by peeling back our individual pairs. Take off the separator on the inside. Um, I'm actually gonna throw the boot on the end here. The first sort of step is to untwist them. We wanna actually use the butt of a screwdriver to straighten them out a bit, um, but we're gonna use the 568B spec. So while we're lining up the, the colors, how we want them to go into the connector, it's good to keep in mind that you need to keep it as clean as possible because we want the connector to be as close to the insulation as possible. And if it's all bunched up at the end there, you're not gonna be able to get a clean, snug fit. All right, so our Cat 6A cables, unlike Cat 5E, you can see inside there that there's holes for the connectors and they're actually staggered rather than just being a straight line like this. So as we put these conductors into this bar, it's gonna move some of them up so they can actually fit inside the end of the connector. Make sure it's right up to the end. You should be able to see inside there, the bar will meet up with the plastic inside the termination. When you're ready, just crimp it shut and we're done. This time I've got seven gigs of test files. Let's go ahead and copy that over. Hey, not bad. This is only on a couple of RAID 1 uh, SATA SSDs, so that was higher than I was expecting, but also, okay, I guess we good now. So that's it. Now that we've tested and we've got a good 10 gig connection down to the media center here, you might be wondering, why do you need 10 gig down there? Well, that's where our XGU2008 switch comes in. This has two 10 gig ports and eight one gig ports. So the point of that is that you've got a 10 gig trunk and every one of the individual devices down here, whether it's an Nvidia Shield or a smart TV or gaming PC or whatever the case may be, each device down here gets its own one gigabit connection, even if none of them are taking advantage of 10 gig. And of course, it's two 10 gig ports. So if I did get a gaming PC that was 10 gig, then I could always add that as well. We've got these couplers instead of the more typical uh, keystone at the back things. Looks like we got a 10 gig link, so now we just need to test it, like for reals, with our fluke doodad. Jake, do we know how to use that thing? Uh, somewhat. <laughs> it should be able to tell us whether or not this cable is ready for 10 gig base T. A pass, look at that. So if we check our wire map, we can see that the wiring is all matching on both ends. Nobody messed that up and see our length of 46 feet. All of our numbers look good and the resistance also good. Hey, it's not money, but it's a working cable. So that's it then, switch upgrade, a couple network adapters needed upgrading and a couple of our cable runs needed upgrading and we're 10 gig up in this biz. So goodbye Cat 5e. Hello, Cat 6A, and what was the total damage then? So we've got $500 for the new 10 gig switch. Yeah, assuming that you need an entire spool of uh, Cat 6A cabling, that was about 150 bucks from Infinity Cables. Then there's a couple bucks here and there for your uh, termination ends, your wall jacks, your wall plates, and all that kind of stuff. So all told, depending on whether or not you need a 10 gig switch for you know, a whole bunch of devices that are in one place, you're looking at under 850 US dollars or a little over $1,000 for 10 gigging your house. Now that might seem like a lot of money, but compared to what 10 gigging your place would have cost even just three to five years ago, it is pretty darn affordable. I mean, back then, even on eBay for secondhand hardware, you were paying, you know, 300 plus dollars for a single 10 gig adapter. Speaking of stoked, 
I'm stoked to tell you about our sponsor, Privacy.com. With Privacy.com, you don't have to worry about your credit card falling into the wrong hands due to a data breach. Privacy.com hides your true credit card number by creating virtual cards that are actually tied to the individual merchants that you shop at. Privacy.com is a free, easy to use service that prevents your credit card number from falling into the wrong hands. So instead of giving a merchant that you're shopping with online your real credit card number, you give them a virtual card that Privacy.com creates for you that's actually locked to that individual merchant. So if that merchant gets hacked, not only do they not get your real credit card number, you actually get a notification that that merchant's been hacked so you can shut off that virtual card. Cards are super easy to set up. You just need to create an account, link your virtual cards to your checking account or debit card, set a limit, et voila, you're all set. They've even got a browser extension that will autofill your information while you're shopping. Privacy.com is PCI DSS compliant, uses military grade encryption to secure your information, and they offer two-factor authentication. And because they make their money from the stores you shop at, instead of from you, Privacy.com is free. And if you go to Privacy.com slash Linus, we're gonna have that linked below. They'll even give you five bucks in credit to spend on your next purchase. That's Privacy.com slash Linus. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe you can check out our previous network run install video. We'll have that link down below and I will see you next time.